Hey, what's up makers? April Dunham here. Have you heard the news? Power Automate Desktop is now free for Windows 10 users. In this video, I'm gonna break it all down for you and give you a high level overview of what Power Automate Desktop is, where you might use it, how to install it, and we'll even create our first Power Automate Desktop flow. All that coming up right after this. So what is Power Automate Desktop? Now I thought I would start with what it's not. So to clear up any possible confusion here, Power Automate Desktop is not simply a desktop version of the functionality that we have in Power Automate. So if you've used Power Automate at all, you probably know you can go to float.microsoft.com, log in with your Office 365 account and create flows. So here we have things called cloud flows. So we have over 400 different connectors here in these cloud flows to connect to those cloud services and automate things. So a common example of things we can do here, we can trigger a workflow to kick off when a new item is added to a SharePoint list or library, or when a record is added into a Dataverse database, or when someone joins a team in Microsoft Teams. So all those different services were able to automate things with using those connectors. Now Power Automate Desktop is not giving you the ability to create those cloud type flows in a desktop app. It is actually something different. Now here in Power Automate, you might notice that we have the cloud flows, but we also have a section for desktop flows. That is where this new Power Automate Desktop application will come into play. What Power Automate Desktop does is allow us to use something called Robotic Process Automation, or RPA for short, to automate things on our desktop. So how RPA works is you can take those repetitive tasks that you do, you can enter in and record your user actions that you would take to do those things, like say, copying data from one spreadsheet in Excel to another, or copying information from a website and putting it in a database, whatever it might be. A software bot will actually record that and will be able to mimic those steps that you took so you can automate the process. With Power Automate Desktop, there's a built-in recorder to record your actions and over 400 different actions that we can interject in here. So where this differs from those cloud flows in Power Automate is if there is something that you need to automate that isn't included in one of those 400 different connectors to those various cloud services that we offer there, Power Automate Desktop can handle any of those extra scenarios. So whether it's something on your actual machine, like copying files from one folder to another, or whether it is something on the web and another web application that just doesn't have a connector, we can actually leverage this Power Automate Desktop and RPA to automate that. Now I mentioned in the intro that it was just announced at Ignite that this is included now for free if you have Windows 10. Now this means that Traditionally, to use those desktop flows, the RPA functionality, you had to pay a premium license to handle that. But with it being included in Windows 10, we're able to automate these things at no additional cost. Now, of course, there is a particular scope that this is set to. So this is intended for personal use. So those repetitive tasks that you might wanna automate for yourself. There are still going to be scenarios where you might want to upgrade and need that premium licensing that we have for RPA and desktop flows. Some of those scenarios include being able to share and collaborate. So if you have an RPA process that you've built out with Power Automate Desktop and you want your colleagues or your friends to be able to benefit from it, that would be where you would need to upgrade to the premium licensing. Another might be leveraging AI builders. So with the Power Platform, we have rich AI functionality leveraging AI builders. So things like being able to take a invoice and automatically determine the text and OCR that and get the text out of that. So that's something that AI builder can do, but we will still need to leverage the premium Power Automate licensing for that. And also combining with cloud flows. So we just looked at the cloud flows and we know that we can leverage those with various connectors like SharePoint and Dynamics and Dataverse, Twitter, all those other different services. So if you wanted to do something and combine say a RPA desktop flow with one of those cloud flows, you would also need the premium licensing. And lastly, we might need to upgrade to that premium licensing if we wanted to leverage some of the 
unattended scenarios. And what we mean by that is with robotic process automation, we have attended and unattended. So Power Automate Desktop, the free version with Windows 10, is really gonna help you with those attended scenarios, meaning that you would help kind of kick off the process that it's automating. Whereas unattended processes work independently and can run, say, on a schedule. So for any of those scenarios, you'll still want to upgrade to the premium licensing, which you can find here on the pricing page on Power Automate's site. But there are still so many different processes that we can automate with the free version. So what are some good use cases for desktop flows? Well, really, this can be leveraged for any web or desktop application or process that you want to automate. That's the sheer power of it. Now, some more specific ideas. One is screen scraping. So say you need to go out to a website every day. Maybe it's to see what the latest news is and you want to aggregate that into a special feed for your company internet. We can leverage a desktop flow and the RPA functionality that Power Automate Desktop offers us to extract that information and put it in another system like say SharePoint. Data migration is another big one. So maybe you have a file share, an FTP, and you have files uploaded. You need to move them to a different location every day on a daily basis. That's another great use case for Power Automate Desktop. Onboarding task is another great one. So if you have a new hire at your company, we have a bunch of different tasks that we might need to do. We probably need to create an account in Exchange, send them a welcome email, add them into various systems, you name it. All things that we can leverage Power Automate Desktop for. Invoice processing is another one. This might be an area where maybe you would want to pay for the premium licensing so you can take advantage of AI Builder and the invoicing processing functionality embedded in that. And also software testing. So for my IT people out there, if you're building software and you need to do unit testing, we can actually leverage Power Automate Desktop and RPA functionality to help us with that testing. So those are just a few ideas. Now I wanna switch over and I'm gonna show you how we can install this and how we can build our first flow in Power Automate Desktop. All right, now first things first, where do we go to download and install Power Automate Desktop? So you'll want to go to flow.microsoft.com and you should see at the top of the page, like we're seeing here, an option for download free for Power Automate Desktop. And again, this is for Windows 10, so absolutely free if you have a Windows 10 machine. So if you click the download free button, that will instantly start a download of the Power Automate desktop application. Looks like it's done downloading, so we'll select open file and run through the install process. So we'll click next here, and on this screen, you'll choose where you want to install the application, and there are a few checkboxes that you wanna make sure that you have checked here. They should be checked by default, but you'll wanna double check that. So you want to make sure that we have the install Microsoft Edge web driver. That's going to allow you to record actions in the browser there. Also, there's a checkbox here to allow remote connections. You want to make sure to check that if you want to run these flows in what's called unattended mode, meaning they can run automatically without you having to take any action. And these other two are optional if you want to install a shortcut or if you want to let Microsoft collect any information to help improve Power Automate. So just accept the terms of conditions there and click install and that will run through the process. So it looks like the install is successful. We can also additionally install some extensions in our browser of choice, whether that is Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome. So you'll see links here if I click on one of those that will allow us to download the add-on so that we can use Power Automate Desktop to automate things in the browser. So if you're wanting to say screen scrape a website, fill out a web form, automate processes like that, then you want to install and download this extension. So to do that, we'll just press get, add extension, and that'll download that for us. Now back here to Power Automate Desktop, we're going to click launch and we'll take a look at what the application looks like. The first thing that we want to do here when we launch the application is to sign in with our Windows account. So I'll use my Windows email address here that I have associated with this computer and click sign in and just select get started. And now we're ready to start creating our first Power Automate desktop flow. To get started, we're going to click the new flow button and give our flow a name. Now for this flow that I'm going to demo, I'm going to show how we can take some data from a website 
export the CSV data and import that into a spreadsheet. This is a very common scenario where you might on a daily or weekly or monthly basis, whatever it might be, need to take data from another source on the web, export that and import that into a different system. And I'm going to call this one Power Automate Trends because one of the things we're going to do here is look at Google Trends and take that information for the searching of Power Automate and populate that into an Excel spreadsheet so we can report off of it. So I put in my title, click Create, and now this is going to open up the Power Automate Desktop Editor. There are a couple different ways that we can handle this. So on the left-hand side here, you see we have the Actions panel. So we can actually explore this and draw particular actions onto the screen here to build out our desktop flow. So we could expand out any one of these action categories take an action and drag that over into the main panel here to build out our flow. So if I wanted to download something from the web, I can expand out the web automation category. And you see we have options here to launch any of the particular web browsers we want to launch, whether it's Edge or Chrome or Firefox. So I could take the launch an Edge browser and drag that and click it and drag it over here. And then I can configure some properties. I can choose the launch mode, whether I want this to open up a new instance of Edge or attach to an existing instance. Then I can choose the URL that I want to launch. Now I can do it this way, but there's another way that might be a little bit easier. So I'm going to cancel out of this. If we look here in the upper panel, we see two options. We have a little globe and we have a little computer looking icon. So one is the web recorder and one is the desktop recorder. What these will do is it will run a recorder in the background. So you can click it, run it. It will track your every keystroke and mouse click that you're doing and record all those actions for you and add that into the canvas to build out your flow. That way I'm not having to search through here and find all the individual actions that I need. It will just record my steps and pretty much build the flow for me. So for my case for this process, I actually want to start on the web, go to the Google Trends site, do a search and download a CSV file. So to build this out, I'm actually gonna start here with the web recorder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click the web recorder icon. So I choose the browser from here. Now, right now this only supports Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and surprisingly still Internet Explorer. So for this, I'm going to choose Edge. And if we expand out the advanced option, we can give this browser instance a name and we can pick a tab if we already have a tab open that we want to go to. But for this, I'm going to select new tab so we can see the process from the start. So I'm going to click that, click next. And you see what I did here is it launched Edge for me. And then on the left, we have our web recorder. So once I'm ready to record my process, I can come up to the left-hand side and click Start Recording. Now it's going to monitor my every mouse click and keyboard entry. So I'll go back and do all my actions. So I'm going to go into the web browser and I'm going to paste in a URL to the Google Trends website. And you see as I perform each action, it's logging that here in the web recorder. Now I'm going to search for a term. I want to search for Power Automate. Press Enter. And if you've never looked at Google Trends, it's actually pretty interesting. You can put in any search term and see a history over time of how popular that particular search is. So I can see for Power Automate, it kind of has went up and up. And then especially as lately, it's been very popular. I can scroll down and even see interest by region and then related topics and queries. Now the process I'm trying to automate here is I have a spreadsheet that I report off of every week that shows the interest in Power Automate over time using the Google search trends. So as part of my job, every week I come to Google Trends, I do the search for Power Automate that we just did, then I come in here and I filter it. So rather than the past 12 months, I'm going to get a custom time range and only pull the data for the last week. So I'm going to select the past week option. So now I'm gonna click OK to filter my data. Again, I'm paying attention to the recorder, everything that I'm doing so far is being logged. Now I need to export this to a CSV so that I can import this into my Excel spreadsheet I'm using to track this. So I'm going to click here on the download button to extract that CSV. That will download it for me. And now that's it for the web piece of this. So what I'm going to do is click finish here in my web recorder. And that takes me back to Power Automate Desktop and it's logged every single action I've taken here in all of my steps. Now I need to complete the process. I want to take that exported CSV, 
copy the data from that and import that into my spreadsheet. For that, I'm going to use the desktop recorder. So on this main screen here, I'm going to click below after all these steps and then select desktop recorder. Now I'm going to get my file explorer pulled up and now I'm going to start recording so that I can open up that spreadsheet and copy it over. So I'll press start recording. You see as I hover over things, it's highlighted in red. So I'm going to double click and open up this timeline spreadsheet. And you see that it's even tracking when I'm resizing these panels. Now these are things if I don't need that in the actual workflow, I can delete those later and I'll show you how. So I have this spreadsheet open. Now I'm going to actually move that down and I'm gonna go back to my file explorer. I'm gonna to navigate to the documents folder and I'm going to open up my Power Automate Trends Excel spreadsheet. So notice that's getting logged here as well. So I already have some data populated in this spreadsheet. I'm gonna go back to the spreadsheet that we downloaded and I'm just going to take everything here and I'm going to drag, hover over that and copy all of this data. Then I'm going to go back over to my trends and I'll paste all that in. Then I'll click save. And if we click over here to the report tab, you see we have our history of trends of power automate interest over time, which is what we'll show to our managers every week. So now we're really finished with the process here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click finish in the recorder. And you see that in addition to those web actions that we did, it appended all of our desktop actions below as well. Now you'll see everything that it was able to log. It's even logging when we moved windows. So as I moved the Excel window around, it logged exactly where I moved it to in the coordinates. So if we didn't need that as part of our process, we can simply click on these three dots here and click delete to, to remove that from the flow. So it's really just as easy as that. Now all we need to do is click save and we can actually close out of the editor here and that will take us back to the home screen where we can see all the desktop flows that we created. Now that I have this done, the next time that I need to go through that process, so next week when I have to download that report and integrate it into my worksheet, all I have to do is open up Power Automate Desktop like I already have open, find the flow that I created, and click the Run button. So when I do that, it's actually going to automatically kick off the process. As you see, I'm not clicking anything, and it actually went and automatically opened up the Google Trends site. Now all I have to do is sit back and relax and watch it do the automation. so you just saw the magic happen. I hope that this gave you a good overview of what Power Automate Desktop is and gave you some ideas of where you might use it. If you found this helpful, do me a favor, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.